Well, here's the thing. After 30-something years in the business, like getting to a point where I, at least I thought I was happy with what I did. I didn't care what anybody else thought. Like I did my two projects, my CD, my DVD. Right. And I, didn't, I did those as a means to an end to, to move away from music. Mm. The opposite as what most people. Most people right. are like, I'm going to make these things and I'm going to get a Ferrari or something. <laughs> with me, it was like, I'm going to make these things so, because now I feel like I want to do, expand my mind a little bit. I want to go to school, whatever. So I did it. And then I went into community college. Right. And I just started hearing like, you know, lots of hot air from a lot of academics and like yeah. some really like dry stuff. And, and the, the thought in my mind was like, have these people ever actually been out in the world? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, so that's why I said in that, that TED Talks thing that I did is that that's what knowledge is to me. That's what education is to me. You have to, you have, to have street smarts. You have to understand what's going to work. And you also have to have the, the book smarts too. Yeah. You know, I, I tried to, you know, uh, get both, you know. I just took a, an art humanities class. Uh -huh. I'm three months away from getting my bachelor's at Columbia now. Mm -hmm. And I took an art humanities class and we, we started with uh, like, uh, you know, Raphael and Michelangelo and mm -hmm. the greats in art. And the trend was, as we went on and on, and we got to the point, we got to the, uh, the deconstructionist stuff, like the Jackson Pollock mm -hmm. stuff and all that stuff. We, we took art, which was one something that like only like certain people could do, whether it was learned or they had natural innate talent. Right. With, at the end, with, with a guy like Jackson Pollock throwing stuff on a canvas, we, we, we couldn't get much lower. So with, in regard to the, the laptops and all that stuff and music, uh, my, my theory is that the bar is not lowered, it's on the floor with music that's really what i think yeah. but on the bright side of that just like in the renaissance i think that's the only thing that could will happen in music there's going to be uh, people are going to want to see guys that could actually play yeah. it's really getting old where you know guys bring in apple computers yeah. and stuff and whatever you know i just think that it can't go any lower so <laughs> so people are going to you know w eventually People are going to want to see an experience of guys that can can go in the studio and you know actually play and and, yeah. and and the difference between people on stage and people in the audience. Remember that difference? There used yeah, to be yeah, like yeah. You used to look out and say, well, you know, someday I'll be there. But now there's no, yeah. it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, I, I'm ho at least I'm hopeful. You know? you have a good I would suggest than anyone, like a young, if somebody who's 18 years old, and they have come to me and say, what the parents, what should I do? Yeah. I would suggest absolutely going to school, some kind of college, not necessarily studying music. Mm. I would suggest that maybe you have another interest that you might find in college, because if you're truly talented, you could always study privately. Mm. You don't need to, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It doesn't have right. to be like, I'm going to study music in college and that's all I'm going to do because that's all you will be able to do yeah. after four years. I'm not saying that's for everybody, but that's what I would advise. And I would suggest if they wanted to study music in school, that they should come out with an education degree mm -hmm. so they can teach. Because I know a lot of really great players that they're, they're teaching, you know. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, that, that's my best advice. And then, of course, would be not to be so enamored with anyone's particular style where you become that person right, right. because that's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. That's what I think. Gig nightmare? I, I can honestly say I, I, I haven't had many. Oh, you're lucky. I really haven't. I've had yeah. some deaths, as some of the guys that preceded me said, <laughs> but nothing really, you know, you know, some, you know, a couple of guys actually passed away on, on wedding gigs that I was on, but... Really no gig, just the only gig nightmares are the, the instances where the drummer is a nightmare. Yeah. And, and that's, that, those are the nightmares. <laughs> those are the gig nightmares.